Very cool. We're in a series called What's in a Story? There's your name, which that means I'm hopeful name. that you're going to tell us a little bit about your story. So I'll pray and then I'll hand over to you just to intro yourself and just to tell us a little bit about yourself. So Father, I just thank you so much for Miracle. I thank you for who she is and what you've done in her. And Lord, I pray that you would bless her today. You would encourage her. You would fill her with peace and confidence as she shares that story in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Why don't you start by just telling us a little bit about your heart for why you're sharing your testimony today? All right. Uh, well, my name is Miracle. Um, I've been coming to Life Church since the September of 2021. So I don't know how long that is, but I came for my master's and I've just stayed. And I stayed because of Life Church, to be honest. Um, for today, my heart really, and I've been praying about this, is that you get to see the fingerprints of God in my life, especially in the seasons that it does not look like it. Yep. And that you get to see God's love and you get to see God's goodness pursuing me because he has. Yeah. And I pray that as we all live here, we have a heart that wants to surrender to God. Yeah. The, the song that just came before the goodness of God, a couple of years back, I prayed to God and asked him to give me a song that would define my life. And that was a song that we chose wow. a few years back. So when I heard it this morning, I thought, oof, okay, now I'm going to start crying my eyes out. I don't cry a lot. Maybe I do, but like... <laughs> People okay, that live I, with you I, would like to differ. I, apparently I do, but that, I think that's a reminder of what I'm going to say today is as much for me as it is for you guys as well. So, so I actually get to yeah. remember yeah. and see what he's done for me. So, so I pray that we all yeah. get to understand just how good God is yeah. when it doesn't Amazing. look like it. Amazing. Amazing. Awesome. I'll <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being willing to share that with us. So why don't you just start by just sharing a little bit to a, a background to your life, um, and maybe sh up to the point where you left where you were born. Tell yeah. us about that. So I was born in Nigeria, the south. Thank you very much. We are quite <laughs> superior. <laughs> the south, east, the south. In the is what state? I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't know, but somewhere in Nigeria I was born. You could born. say anything, it would be fine. <laughs> you wouldn't even know if I was wrong, that's true. Um, I was born into a family of a Methodist bishop, not an archbishop, and my mom handled the women's ministry. So it was a house of God. And I like to say I was born into faith because I don't remember ever not knowing about Jesus, about God, because my parents made sure to talk about their faith, to talk about it every single day. And we lived the life of a pastor's kid. So I was there Sunday morning very early. I was there on Wednesday for Bible study. I was there on Friday. There was always something going on. So I lived that life. Didn't mean that I knew Jesus. It just meant that I was the nice pastor's kid. And I wanted to impress my parents. So I did what I knew I was meant to do. I did know God in a way. But I think I, I like to say that I knew God as Savior and as a miracle worker. I didn't know anything else. I didn't know he could be a father. I didn't know he could be a friend. He was wow. just savior, a miracle wow. worker. And my ticket out of hell. That's I, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy when I say that, but that's what I believed then. Mm -hmm. So I remember that I would, I gave my life to Christ at least more than 10 times in Nigeria. Because I would, everything that was an altar call, I would go back and be like, what? Well, if the last sin was not covered, it's covered now. So I kept going. <laughs> I think if you grew up in Nigeria, you might understand that. So I kept going back. But I think God knew what he was doing. Because he's probably like, oh, she's back again. But I, I know that the, fo the first time I did that, he accepted me. And I wish I knew that then. But it's okay, because he had a plan. So, um... Like I said, my limited view of God was God the miracle worker, God the savior, and um, God my ticket out of hell. And I wish I knew him as father and friend at that time, but it had not, it had not, I, had not, I had not started my personal journey yet. And God knew when I was meant to start that. I um, ended up living in Nigeria at the age of 16, 17, because I moved to California to start um, my pre-med program. And I moved by myself and everything. Um, but one thing that I always like to say when I talk about my, fun, my life at that age is the foundation that my parents had planted. Even mm. though I did not know Christ personally, mm. I knew of him. I believed that God was there, but I had not yet started my work. Parents, I just want to encourage you. It might not look like your kids get what you're saying. Believe me, they do. Wow. They really do. The foundation that you leave for your kids are so important. My parents preached God. But they came home and they lived God. Wow. I saw my parents be with God when times were difficult mm. and praising when times were good. So I knew that there was God and I knew that the foundation they had set would carry me for the rest of my life. So I'm just Great. encouraging you. It might not look like it, but he 
God will do, they're God's kids. God will take care of that's them. Right. You let the foundation, they see you, they're looking at you, and then let God take care of the rest. But yeah, that was it. Left at 12, moved to a boarding school, and then at 16, 17, moved to California. So that's sort of the beginning of right. the miracle. Yeah, that's amazing. And so I remember you were telling me that actually as you moved to California, it, it, it was almost like life got a bit more chaotic. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so I, the minute I moved, I like to say that I left my parents covering because I had lived their faith. I lived as a pastor's kid and I did not have mine yet. Don't get me wrong, I still, I would preach sometimes in my school, but there was nothing personal about me in Christ. It was right. not there yet. The minute I moved, everything fell apart. One, obviously, I was very young when I moved, and that was God taking me through, because me now, I would not have taken myself away from my parents at that young age, but God was with me, even though I did not see it, because I had a limited version of God as God the miracle worker and God the Savior. When the chaos came into my life, and I prayed, God help me, there was no miracle happening, and I just thought, well, I guess he either doesn't exist or he doesn't love me. Wow. So, Unfortunately, I did. No, I wouldn't say unfortunately because God had a plan. I walked out of my faith for six months. Uh And that's why I love this song because even though I walked out, he was pursuing me. Yeah. And then um, those six months, it has to be one of the most restless times of my life. Mm -hmm. And I've been through a lot, but it felt like my covering was gone. I, I, I don't like heights. I am scared of heights. But I like to explain it as a time when I was up on a cliff and I was dangling and there was nothing to protect me. That, that's what it felt like. Because even though I thought God did not exist because there was no miracles happening, I knew that he was protecting me in some way. So once I walked out, everything just sort of fell apart. I knew that I was missing something. I knew that my heart created for something. I just, for one, did not have it in my heart to go to him when he was not giving me what I wanted and I wanted him to give me what I wanted but like, again he had a plan I always say but God because that's my story things will happen but God that's going to be a lot of my story so um, yeah. true that's and that thing community is so important I'm, I, I'm an ex introvert now I'm trying to <laughs> It's a very complicated situation. You nearly said extrovert there. I nearly did that. But every time I say that, everyone goes, no. So I'm like, I, but I used to be very quiet, very shy. And I kept myself away from people. I, my, my easy place is to seclude myself when, I, when get, things get difficult. So, but God knew what I needed. So he put me into this college where I met my best friend. And she's an extrovert. She's not like me at all. And um, we got in contact. I tried to run away from her a lot of times because I just thought, you're too much for me. God kept bringing her into my life and bringing me into her life. Long story short, I somehow got to meet her family. And um, mom, I call her mom, mom, nan, and dad because they became my family as well. And through them, I began to see God again. I began to see God and hear about God the Father and God the friend. I did not understand what that meant. I did not understand that Jesus could live in me. I did not understand that, but he used that community. He used that family to remind me of that. So I slowly started going to Bible study. I started going to the young adults in the church that they went to. And one, there was a young adult weekend away that I ended up going to that. I was not meant to. That's how God does it. Since I was not meant to go. It was not for me. My best friend Jessica was meant to go. But the night before, something happened. And I ended up going in her, in her place. But that was where God met me. Wow. Because before I left for that weekend away, there was just so much disappointment. There was so much bad news. There was everything. That's usually how you hear me talk about this. But things were just going wrong. But... We had gone through Bible studies and stuff like that and in the, during the trip. And they asked us to go away and sit down and talk to God. Let God talk to you. And bear in mind, I don't, I don't pray. Or at least I stopped praying. I don't know how to read my Bible because it confuses me. Revelation, Matthew, I don't go close to it, at least during that time. So when we sat down there. I did not know what to do. So I was like, well, if you're going to do something, God, you might as well do it now. So I just sat there on the floor. And a song came to my heart, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. And I kept singing that song, singing that song. I did not know what it meant, but I knew of that song as a kid. And I still feel like something happened in that moment because for the first time in my life, I felt peace. But I felt peace in chaos because yeah. it was, I, I, I was not meant to feel peace, not what, what was going on. But 
God knew what I wanted. He knew that I had left him due to the chaos of my life. So he came to me as Jehovah Shalom and he brought uh, peace. Right. And I met the Prince of Peace that day. And I could not understand it, but that's what the Bible says. Peace that passes all understanding. That's right. I still don't, but I yearn for that peace yeah. because nothing, is, nothing can explain. Nothing, I don't understand it, but I knew that was God. Yeah. So I left that weekend away very particular about pursuing God to know the God of peace. And it's just been, it's been up and down. But when I finally got home, I spoke to mom and dad, California mom and dad. And <laughs> I, I say that a lot. Then your mom and dad, California mom and dad. Um, and because of the environment he had placed me in, there were people who were speaking life into me. So I did not know how to go and pursue God myself. So he used them to speak into me. So when I had a question, mom was there, dad was there. There was always God in the background. So not even in the, in the front. So the foundation that my parents had laid had, was strong enough that the bricks that the community that I was around was planting and Very was good. laying yeah. was able to stand and that sort of started my maturity and growth in God because I wanted to know for myself. Yeah. I knew that he was good to my parents, but what about for miracle? You know, yeah. I wanted that. So, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. And that's incredible just to hear how you've come from a place where actually you could do whatever you want. And actually what you found was that led you to feel restless mm. and chaotic and maybe even even a bit hopeless and it was only yeah. until you encountered Jesus where um, something changed inside of you. Now, I suppose that means that your life just transformed and everything was perfect <laughs> when you met Jesus. Is, is, is that what you mean? No, definitely not. No? No, uh, the opposite. And that's not a bad thing because God has met me in, in my good place but also in my bad place. Things have happened a lot. I've had my most difficult times when I... I was pursuing God. I've had difficulties. Wow. And I wish someone told me that, that God is good. And yeah. that's true. But sometimes working with God can bring pain. You can have suffering and pain. You can have suffering and pain while working with God. You can have suffering and pain without God. But once you accept God, it doesn't mean that the suffering and pain goes away. It's still going to happen. Yeah. But he's still good. And I wish someone taught me how to go through suffering. You know, we preach the prosperity gospel, and that's, that's good. We need that as well. But we also need to remember that Jesus suffered, and his suffering is what brought about our salvation. So if our goal is to be Christ-like, we are going to suffer. And now I know, now I know that, but then I did not know that at all. So it was very difficult for me to yeah. understand what was going on. I have, like, two really pivotal moments in my life that shaped everything. Um, the November of 2021, when I just moved to Bristol, I had um, definitely the darkest moment of my life because, for one, I started Life Church in September, but no one knew me. So there was no one to call me and ask me, oh, you're okay, or why are you in church? And that's why I feel like we should keep an eye out for people who we don't see after a few Sundays. And check in because you don't know what the person might be going through during that season. And I could not tell you what was going on now, but then it felt like the worst thing to happen. And that's what the enemy does. He blinds you to your pain. He makes it be the biggest thing in your life. And that's all you see. Mm. That season brought me hopelessness. It brought me darkness. And all I, I felt was like I was drowning. I, would, I started praying. I used to pray then. And then slowly I stopped praying. And I would cry a lot. And I stopped crying. I just went numb. And once you go numb and you're hopeless, that's a very dark place to be. And my heart goes out to people there because I know what it feels like. But God, because during that season, I secluded myself. I did not go to church. Nothing. I stopped going to church. There was seclusion. And in my seclusion, all I heard was from the enemy. I did not hear anything from the people of God. I did not seek God myself. So in your seclusion, it's a very difficult place to be. I would never encourage anyone, even if you're an introvert like me or as I used to be, seclusion is a place where the enemy comes to do his best work. You need seclusion sometimes to meet God personally, but when you're in a difficult time, don't ever seclude yourself because the enemy knows just how to push your buttons. And he knew that because the pain was so strong that, and I still ask God to forgive me, but there was this Saturday that I just could not take it. And in my heart, the only way to stop the pain, sorry, was to end it. 
And unfortunately, I did take actions towards it. And but God, because the minute I stepped into the place I was meant to do, what I was meant to do, I could not tell you what happened afterwards. I could not tell you how I ended up going home. I could not tell you how the plans stopped without not being, I just, I could not tell you. But the next morning, I got up for the first time in a while, I dressed up and I went to church. My life did not become automatically better. The pain was still there. But what two things happened that day, God made me, I'm not a very vulnerable person and I'm learning to be, but God made me vulnerable enough to share with a close friend of mine. She wasn't close to me then, but I shared what was happening to her. She prayed with me. She cried with me. And she sat there and spoke life into me. Mm. Things were still not better. I went back to church. And people, I could see God through the eyes of people. Even though I could not see him in my life, I could see him through the eyes of people. And there's something that does to you. It begins to change parts of you. It doesn't make a situation better, but it changes your perspective. And I knew that it wasn't just all dark. Like, God was still working in their life, so why not me? So I left that day not different, but I was hopeful that he yeah. would he would still find me. That's right. And thankfully, my mom and dad, for the first time, came to the UK together. My whole family spent the time together for the first time since I left Nigeria. And that was God orchestrating that because he used them. I don't think they know what they did for me. And if you're watching, thank you. Because this, my mom and dad will always talk about God. Like, they leave God. So they spoke into me. When I could not find God for myself, he put me in an environment where mm. people were speaking mm. God to me. And I could see God through them. And I was prayed over. They didn't know what they were praying about, but they were praying. There was morning prayer. There was night prayer. He, yeah. he put me in that environment because I could not find him myself. But he was faithful and he was pursuing me and he knew that he he I was important to him yeah and even though I did not feel that I feel like but now I remember and I'm like that was you that was you taking care of me that was you yeah. planting me in a place so where you're planted is so important don't take that for granted your community is so important God will use them to hold you when you can't hold yourself right. it's just like the guy who um the the friends in the bible that had to bring the crippled man God will use your friends sometimes to save you, your church community, your, your family. Like, because my family in the U.S., God used them to save me. My family here, God used them. Life church, God used them. It wasn't me. I couldn't, even though I wanted it to be me, it wasn't me. He fought my battle through his yeah. brethren, and I'm yeah. so grateful for that. So good. It's so good. Let's give Miracle a round of applause. Thank you for sharing that, mate. Wow. That's incredibly powerful. And just a testimony, I think, of how God loves to engage with us. Yeah. That God is not a God who we have to get up every morning and think, God, how, how am I going to impress God? How am I going to make up for the stuff that I've done? Actually, he's a God who is there even when we don't want to acknowledge him. And he's a God who wants to use each one of us to point to him. I guess what we could say is that God could have just, you know, there could have been like a big angel or something in your, in, in your room at that darkest time. But actually what he used was the community around you. He used the words and the journeys of other people around you to remind you that there is a God and he is real and he brings hope and he brings life. Yeah. And it's just incredible, isn't it, that what the enemy would want to have done, which is to bring you down. Actually, God used that whole situation actually to bring you closer to yeah. him. Yeah. Don't think that the situation that you are in right now is the end of it. Oh, that's exciting. Um, don't think that the situation that you are in right now... <laughs> You're right, Jim. If Jim wants me to stop talking, this is the kind of thing I have to put up with, like... Excellent. No, you didn't get me, actually. I'm pretty dry. If the situation that you are in... Come on, fo focus on me, everyone. Eyes on me. One, two, three. Use my teacher voice. If the situation that you are in, hey, maybe this is so important that actually the enemy just wants to use anything to just try and distract us. But you need to understand that the situations that we are in are not the final word on it. God has the final word on it. And he may bring that word through people around us. He may bring that through his word in scripture. But what he does want us to know is that he is with us in those situations. He is there with you. He has not left you. He has not forgotten you. He is there with you. And his plans for you are to prosper you. He has a future for you 
you. He has a hope for you. He has a hope for you miracle. And I love that that's the place that that, that, have, that, that brought you to, even in the midst of something incredibly, incredibly dark. That's amazing. I just say mm. that one thing I try to remind myself and for everyone in that situation is there is another side to suffering and pain. It just doesn't stop there. Like, we have different seasons. The sun mm. will rise, the moon will come out, whatever. There is another side to it. You would not see it because I did not see it. But now that I think about it, I'm so grateful that God saved my life because I would not be here. I would not be living the life that he had called me to mm. if I had. Mm. I did not even do anything. I was just there and he loved me enough to care for me. I did yeah. nothing. Yeah, that's that's really the thing. Yeah. I, I can't really even good. say that I did something. Yeah. But... He was good. Yeah. Mm. And that's, that's so good. That's so good. You don't have to have done anything. And yet God says to you, you are my child and I love you. And I've spoken to many people who feel like they've got to earn something with God. Oh, I'm not good enough. I've heard people say, oh, I couldn't come into a church. I'd probably get struck by lightning or something. And I want to tell you, God's heart for you is the same as it is for me and for all of my friends and my brothers and sisters here, that he loves you. He knows you. He created you. And he has a plan and a purpose for you, not because of what you've done, but because of everything that he's done. Because of everything that he's done. So, miracle. It sounds like you got to a place, and I know we were talking this week, so I kind of I know that. But you got to a place where actually you had to surrender to God. Yeah. 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 What did that look like for you? I am still learning to, because surrendering to God is one of the most difficult things I've had to do. But it's given me the best outcome that I could ask for. Because... For me to surrender to God, I had to trust him. And I did not trust God enough. Even though I said I trusted him, I did not. Because I'm going through a season right now, and I'll talk about that very shortly. But that, this season, God has met me even more. Mm-hmm. And when I had that, the first, the first attempt that I had tried to do, what I tried to do, I prayed to God and I asked him, please don't ever let me go back to a place that is so dark. And he answered that prayer because... This season that I'm in easily would have taken me back to that place, but it hasn't, and I know it won't, because God does answer my prayers. He answers our prayers. It might not look like it at times, but he's a father. He doesn't want you to suffer. That's the thing. Um, I had to surrender to him because I did not have anything else left. I, and don't take this the wrong way, I had studied eight years for this med- medical stuff, and I had given everything that I had to it. And when the time came for me to take an exam that would allow me to qualify so that I finally get to leave this season of like being a student, struggling financially for eight years, just everything being in chaos, I thought, oh, finally, I get to do it. And I took the exam. And I've never, don't get me wrong, I've never had an, ex- I've never had an exam in my life before. And I'm not tooting my heart. I'm just trying to explain to you how much it hurt and how I was in disbelief because I failed that exam. And I had made my success in education my God. I had made my career, my future career my God. It was above God. It, it, it was what I had thought would give me meaning in life. And the minute I failed that exam and the job that I had backed away, I lost everything. And I thought, well, what am I meant to do now? I don't have anything. I always like to say that I'm like a, a three-legged table and God just knocked everything out. And I fell flat on my face. And I did not have a single thing to boast about. I don't have a single thing to boast about. So in my desperation to figure out what was going on, I went to God. I started reading this Bible. This is the same Bible that I've had since I was, I don't know, eight. And I opened it really to know what my plan was. But I met God while I was reading it. I did not know that. I did not know that I could feel hope. Uh, it's been taught to me, but I finally knew what it meant to open the word of God and feel his love surround you. Yeah. And I just thought, ah, so this is it. This is what, this is what God was <laughs> talking, this is what everyone was talking about. And that was where everything, a lot of th- stuff happened. I wrote a second time I failed again, and it was, but that second time that I failed, the day after, we had a weekend away, a young adult weekend away, and I did not want to go, but I planned it, so I had to show up. You were leading it. You had to come. <laughs> yeah. So that was God also being 
he was pursuing me. Because in that weekend away, God taught me what life could look like if I gave my life to him really fully surrendered. If wow. my identity wasn't him and not on my education, my success, my career, so I saw a glimpse of what that could look like. Yeah. But I had to step out and intentionally figure out what that meant. So you can have the heart for it, but if you don't intentionally pursue God to yeah. see what he's saying, get, he's trying to let you get. So I had to pursue that by mm. going to this world, even though sometimes I did not know what I was reading. And I'm grateful that he let me see that. And really I had to let go of everything. Mm. everything. But I do good. And surrendering to him has allowed me to get through this season. Yeah. And I'm grateful that, he, I really am grateful that he did not let me go back to that dark place. And you know what he did? He prepared me for this storm. Because one, he took me away from where I was staying and moved me in with the Markhams. Mm -hmm. And because I was living with them, I had a family around me. Mm -hmm. And if I had stayed by myself while I was going through that dark season, I would have, sure. I would have been in seclusion yeah. and gone back there again. But with them, Tara would always knock on my door. <laughs> like consistently, and I, I love her for that, but, and I still had to keep going to church, because what would I tell them? Well, I'm too tired to go to church. I'm Nigerian, and I, I'm a pastor's kid. I don't have the nerve or the guts to say that, so I would always go to church, but through that, life was spoken into me, yeah. and I could see God, even when I did not see him for myself, yeah. so he will prepare you for a storm. Yeah. Yeah. You just ask him to, because it's going to happen, but he's going to yeah. prepare you for it, you That's know? That's good. And surrender sounds tough, but I guess what I'm hearing from you is that actually when we surrender to God, actually it means that our hope is not found in the outcome of situations. It's not found in our jobs. Mm -mm. It's not found in our money. It's not found in the things that we have. It's not even found in our health or our circumstance, but it's found in him. Yeah. You know, it's possible to know hope and life even in the midst of difficult times. It is possible. Even in the midst of times where the baptism tank won't empty, it is, it's possible to know hope. <laughs> It, it's possible to know life. It is possible. Hey, you shared with me five brief things, and they are going to be brief, aren't they? Uh, about how you've learned to surrender, and then we'll, we'll, we'll come like into land here. like you something to me there. Uh, no, no, not at all, yeah. Um, when I was praying about, because he said give points. I would not, I don't really know, but I'm glad that I did. John gave two last week, and I just started laughing, because I did not have two to give. I always go a bit extra, but um, in my heart, I was like, well, what got me to the place of surrender? Yep. And one, go to God. Yep. You have to go to your creator. It should be on the... Look at that. Look at him doing the They're right awesome. thing. It should be... All, yeah, it's there. Um, go to God. Uh, Matthew, Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then everything else. But you have to pursue first. You have to meditate on first. You seek first God's kingdom. Everything else gets added to it go to God. I had to crawl. I crawled back to him. I had to crawl back to him. And he found me. Yeah. You have to understand that he's Abba. He's a father. You don't go to him and he says, go away. A father does not do that. You That's go true. to him and he will find That's you true. there. Yep. But first you have to intentionally go to him. That's right. Open this word yeah. and listen to what he's That's saying. Really good. Really good. Um, number two, I said... <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good job these things go around it's good it is amazing yeah. let go of idols and when I say idols I try to explain it even more because people that I've spoken to don't really get that but God was, was faithful enough to open my eyes to modern idolatry because I think idols and I think the calf the golden calf and obviously I don't have a golden calf if I had I would not be poor like I needed the, there was no golden calf in my room which I would sell so but Tim, <laughs> Tim Keller I don't know if he's there but Tim Keller had this definition of um idol I don't know if you Gareth um the, the, the definition where he says, actually, I don't have it, but because I've seen it so many times, he says, idolatry is anything, anything that, apart from God, that you look at it and you say, if I have that, then my life has meaning. If I have that, my life has value. And if I lose that, I don't know how I would live. That's idolatry. And Very I had good. planted idols that I did not know about. Success was my idolatry, my education physical beauty, relationships, it became idols, and I placed that above God. And he had to restructure my heart to see, sorry, to see that he had to come first because he's always been there. Everything else is going to go away, but he's always been there. 
So I just want to encourage you, even though it's not up there, l- listen to Tim Keller. He's amazing on idolatry. I'm here preach, putting someone. But um, what is it in your life? that is it money? Is it success? If you have it, you think you've got meaning. You think your life has value. Then if you lose it, you don't know how you will live. Ask yourself that question. And, and be humble and open enough to allow God to open your eyes because he will. I had to stop fighting it because I knew, I sort of knew about I was fighting it. And God had to show me, yeah. not just by myself, but through people, through That's talking true. to people, through, you know, Bible studies and me going to this world. Yeah. So, yeah. And then number three was surrender control of the outcome and trust his timing. The... Oh, this one is difficult for me because I love control. I'm a control freak. And everyone who knows me will tell you that I'm very stubborn. And just... (laughs) (laughs) And just um, giving control to God had to take me knowing him. But first, I had to trust him. Mm -hmm. And for me to trust him, I had to know him. And this was the only way I could know him, this book. Because I always prayed as a kid, God, speak to me. Let me hear you. And I always thought he would come to me as miracle, my daughter. No, he did not. And thank God he did not because I'll probably panic. He came to me in this world. I opened this Bible and I met God. I saw God. I felt God. I had to know him. If you don't know someone, you don't trust them. You get to know your father. Listen to his promises because he's got so many. I, this is my love letter. Yeah. Because when I feel hopeless, I come here That's and he good. reminds me. Things are not better, but he reminds me. So you have to know him to trust him. You trust him. When you trust him, you can let go of the control because he's already there. You're not there. You don't know what's going to happen in five minutes to your life. God knows. And I had to be like, okay, I am not sovereign. He is. So I have to let go and trust that he's got the right things for me because he's a father really and he's a savior. And I trust his timing. And believe me, for me, his timing is always late for me. But I know he... I, it's late for me, but not for him. That's He's right. got a plan yeah. for me, yeah. and I'm trusting that. Yeah. I really, I'm, doesn't, sometimes I'm like, oh, my God, I start panicking again. And like, oh, you God. But he brings me back by me going back here yeah. to seek him. That's good. What's number four? Okay. You got? Understand. Two more. Super fast, right? <laughs> Super fast. Understand that suffering is inevitable. There's a whole message about this, so I'll let yeah. you pursue that yourself. But... Suffering will happen, but there is a different side to suffering, like I said. And Paul, somebody in James said that consider it pure joy when you suffer because it tries your faith, your endurance, the whole bit. But it comes down to the fact that when you go through suffering, you become intimate with God. It's It's in my suffering that I became very intimate with God, that I met God as Lord and Savior. But... I want you to know that it's going to happen. Don't run away from it. But learn to find God in it because he's in it. Your suffering will allow you to see God in a different light. And hold on to him in a different way because you become so vulnerable when you're going through things that are so difficult. If my life was full of certainty, my faith would be very frail. But in my uncertainty, he has built my faith. And I, I am grateful for what I've gone through. I don't want to go through it again, believe me. But I would not exchange what I have now with God for anything. I would not exchange the peace and the love that he's given me. I feel loved. Even if I don't do anything else in this life, he would still love me. And that gives me hope. Because I know that I don't have to walk for, my, for him to love me. I don't have to fight for him to love me. He chooses to love me, even in my mess. And number five is remember his past faithfulness, his presence. We forget. We always forget. And it's so easy. But remember that God is good. Yeah. Remember that he's brought you from where you were to where you are now. Mm-hmm. It might not look good, but he's brought you from there. And he will yeah. bring you through this one as well. Remember his present faithfulness. Mm-hmm. God, I thank you that I have life. I've got air in my lungs. I thank you that I've got a community. Remember and see what he's got. Because gratitude and anxiety cannot stand hand to hand. It's true. So the minute I begin to thank him, my anxiety lowers. My life is still where it is. Things are still going wrong. Every day, apart from Sundays, I'm always getting like job rejection. So I love Sunday because nobody's in the office to reject me. But <laughs> even Saturday, they try to do I'm like, who's in the office on Saturday? But yeah. apparently they are. Airplane mode. Quite right. I know. But 
when I remember what he's done, when I remember that season that I almost left this life, I thank him because he loves me. I thank him because he saved me. And it's just the beginning of my story. I believe it is. I don't know what he has in store for me. But oh my God, I am looking forward to it. Yeah, so good.